Thank you for Patreon now for donating to the Patreon. Hey guys, this is Vandy Ezzel, back into Card Fight Vanguard Deck Profiles. I hope you guys enjoyed it. like, comment, subscribe, and let's start, shall we? So this time we are covering Dark States, Diabolos, Violence, Blue Sue for set nine. Oh, I cannot tell you how excited I am. So for those of you that don't know, when Overdress first came out, there were three decks I knew I wanted to play for sure, or like I knew I was going to pick up. Bastion, which interested me the most, which turned out to be like the middle ground one. Bruce, which I wanted the most and turned out to be the second one I main. And then, obviously, Nirvana, where I did not want Nirvana originally, but I was like, I'm going to pick up the third one anyways. And then it turned out Nirvana ended up being my favorite out of all of them. But Bruce, for the new Bruce, I tell you what, he's amazing. First up, whoever called Bruce bad when only his skill was released and even then it wasn't official, I call you high because it wasn't even bad then. And now that it has actual support... I haven't heard anything about it, so I'm just going to assume people think it's good now. Because honestly, getting to go Final Rush and Final Burst a turn early, great. So let's go and get the deck started, shall we? Because honestly, it's insane, and I've been waiting for this moment for a few weeks now. So first up, we have our starter in Diabolos Innocent. Matt, Great Zero Boost by K. Shields, is K. Base. All of them from one second draw card. Standard starter not supposed to be a means that uh, when you go second, you get a free draw, uh, which is all around a pretty nice skill. Uh, being able to refund your ride deck is all around a pretty good plus. And it's just nice to have. So um, one of in the ride deck. Also, technically, the starter doesn't matter. Technically, it does. Because how Viamance Bruce works is you want to have um, as many Diabolos in your deck as possible, which feels so good for me because it feels like that card was made personally for me because we all know how I like to build my decks around archetypes. Ah, thank you, Bushy. For once, we were on the same page. And weirdly enough, this is the deck I have the most broken level of luck with. So I think Bushy has finally learned, or like, or not learned, but me and Bushy have finally connected on a one page. And this has uh, gave birth to some god creation known as Viamance Bruce that just keeps breaking all of my decks in half. So all right, Nissan Matt's a good card. Um, might as well run him as a starter just to get consistency because you do call from Soul Law and you might not have uh, good cards to call outside of Matt and Triggers. So, you know... Matt's nice to have for the start, just in case. Then we have our trigger units. First up, we have our trigger and Terrifying Wicked Dragon King. Vam, please. So finally, I get to run the new overtrigger, which I've been waiting to run for a long time now. I always like to run like the new stuff in newer decks instead of like run them back in old decks. So, great to do a boost, 50k shield, 5k power. Over trigger, you may, you may only have one over trigger in your deck. Rid of, when revealed to trigger, move that card, draw a card, choose one of your up for the turn. And revealed it during your draft check, activate its additional function, which is you get during your turn all your vanguards get plus 10k power and one critical until the end of this fight. That ability is so incredibly broken because, or at least back with the other Bruce, because you could just restand the Vanguard and get uh, benefits out of that. Here, it's still very dangerous because the Vanguard already has pressure on it because you could possibly sack crits and this, but also your rear guards guaranteedly have crits. So now everything is pretty much a death zone area. And I love Vamma Freeze for this. It is genuinely a good card. Um, being able to give 10k a crit. You can also run Gale Mage Held, but I do like Vamma Freeze a little bit more than I like Gale Mage Held. So, why the hell not run uh, Vamma Freeze, am I right? Also because, again, new over trigger, huge pluses, hell yeah. And then we have our normal trigger lineup. So again, I'm going the full Diabolo sign for this one. Three copies of Diabolo's Jake, or Diabolo's Bully's Jake. Great Zero Boost, 5k Shield, 5k Base. Just a free draw trigger. Um, why not? You know, it gets you hand cards, especially in this deck that's really great because before in the other Bruce, you would have to possibly fear of drawing too many of um, your deck while you could possibly deck yourself out because you're focused on soul charging. And now you don't have to worry about that because you're not soul charging nearly as much. So you can just afford to soul charge as much as you want and draw as much as you want. So nice three of draw trigger. We have four copies of the front Diabolos Girls Natalia, who I forgot to put the skill on the slides for again, but hey, it's still good because it's in English, so you can read it. Uh, auto, a great zero boost, 15k shield, 4k base, auto, or Change guard circle, your opponent's vanguards are great through your guards, plus 5k shield. Great, 20k shield. It's nice to have a front trigger. I tell you what, in this deck, stupid shenanigans with luck, I tell you, gets numbers like out the wazoo, but the front triggers seem to always be like what puts it just over enough to block. So, all around, I like giving uh, spread numbers to everyone, especially when you have someone who has extra crits and someone who doesn't. So, front trigger, cool four of, especially because she's a deal with girls, so sometimes you have to call her. And then this one, deal with girls, my my. This one has a story behind it. So, grade zero boost, 15k short, 5k power. So, you know how um, there's always that one character in the anime that sacks crits left and right, and they can pretty much call it from anywhere, and they can kind of make it appear just by saying Ghetto Critical Trigger? Yeah, um, that's me in the real world. Like, no joke. If we go back and watch, like, the Nirvana vs. Bruce video, or, like, any video that has Viamance Bruce in it, or any time I've ever fought with Viamance Bruce, whether it was off-camera or on-camera, I have literally said, when I'm on grade 3, when I'm swinging with Bruce, Ghetto, Critical Trigger, Drive Check, Critical Trigger. 
<laughs> like, it's, mmm. I, I, at this point, I think it's just me and Mai Mai are on a level together that is beyond the concept of logic to the point where I can just call upon her and she'll just appear out of nowhere. This is why Viamid's bruise art has not lost. Granted, because of luck, but if it's this consistent, it's not luck. It is just a thing with the tech. So... I, I don't know how to explain it. For those of you that don't know, I was just doing hand signs trying to figure out how to explain this, but I can't explain it. Four of crits, it, it's deadly. You don't even need four more crits. You can run four crits. You can fucking run rainbows with this shit and it fucking works. Then we have our heal in Diablo's girl, Ariana. Grades of boost, 15k shield, 5k power. Uh, we all know why I run her. Like, uh, first up, I don't like counter heals. In my opinion, they're too situational because once you get out of the situations, they're not useful, and sometimes you have to use them before the situations. So you know you're kind of wasting more guarding power at that point. So I rather stick to the consistent 15k shields instead of the possible 25k shields. But also this, Ariana comes in fucking clutch. If you watch any game on my channel where I've kind of made it clear that I wanted Bruce to win, she shows up. Ask anyone in my friend group that has seen me play Bruce. Every time I want Bruce to win, in the situation where it heals what saves me, whether it's a miracle heal or whether it's just me drive checking a heal, Ariana has shown up. This girl clutches me games. I will never get rid of her. And if I do, everyone has the right to berate me in the comments for this. Four of heal? Screw logic? I don't care if they release a heal that just says when it's placed on a guard circle, you win the game. Ariana stays because she has clutched me games on so many occasions. Four of, fuck every other heal in Dark States. Then move on to our grade ones. Four copies of literally one of the only two cards in the deck that doesn't have Diabolos in its card name. The only other one being, of course, Vama Freeze. And that is our PG Repelled Malice Dragon. Grade one boost, a zero so it's just K base, continue to sunno. You have to force out the deck and also from the guard circle. Choose one of mutants, it cannot be into battle. And if your hand is two more cards, guard from hand is guarded. Uh, standard PG, not special, basically, basically that means if this is only one of the cards in your hand when you place it on guard circle, you don't have to discard a card from your hand. Which is great because that means you can be as aggressive as you want in the early game, which is something this deck wants to do. And you could not suffer from it even if your opponent goes on the all attack because that means you can defend yourself from anything. And also that's amazing. And that's what I love about Viamance Bruce so much because with the other Bruce, in my opinion, you would always be a little bit, or at least I know I would be a little bit hesitant to call rear guards because I know I have to wait till turn four to actually start doing things where most of my skills rely on final rush for that. Now you can start playing things on turn two because even if they board nuke you, well, granted, if you know they're playing a board nuke deck, then don't do that. But like, unless they board nuke you, that means you can keep around most of your units and then you can enter final rush immediately whether you went first or second, uh, final burst will only be a bonus at that point, and you would still get your abilities off one turn early. So I like how this deck you can actively be so much more aggressive in, and your opponent can't really stop you, and that's why this deck is fucking good. The rush can literally come from turn two, and turn three is only when it gets more intense. So four of Repelled Malice, it's amazing. Honestly, though, I'd argue PGs kind of hold this deck back because, you know, that's one less unit with Diabolo, so you can't call as much. But again, I said this deck consistently hits out rear guards like 24-7 to the point where I'd argue it doesn't. Only against nuke decks would I need rear guard consistency with. And even then, you could just not call as nearly as many. So four of Repelled Malice, it's honestly a good PG. Then we have uh, four copies of Diablo's Girl Trish. She is good beyond compare. Great one boost, 5k shield, AK base, continues rear guard or guard circle. If you're on final rush, which thanks to Vitamin is boosting me on during both pair of turns, she gets plus 5k power and 5k shield, active on both pair of turns. Meaning once you hit grade 3, she is a consistent 10k shield and a 13k booster. Awesome. Great. So if you call her to the front row because maybe you had to, it's at least going to be harder to kill the grade one. And if you call it to guard circle, a it's a one to pass on a vanguard as long as it's at 18k or as long as it's 22k or less. Four of Trish. She's amazing. Adds guard power. Adds regular power. Good card. Uh, adds pressure on back row when she's boosting. One of my best boosters by da uh, hands down. Four of. Then we have four copies of, hands down, one of the best grade ones, and I still don't remember if when she was revealed, if I gave, like, a thought about this, like, maybe they're gonna give us a way to get Final Rush during both players' turns, because of how she was worded, but if I did, I was so smart back then, because uh, I called it the future, nine sets ahead of time, uh, seven sets ahead of time, oh, eight sets, actually, because she was in DBT01, holy shit, what, I need to go back and watch my Ezel and the Vandies of that video, because I'm now, I'm now curious what I said about her, anyways, uh, grade one boost by Kishio, aka Base, Diablo's girl Stefani, Kishio's rear guard, if you're in Final rush all the instant and call master get plus five in the original decks honestly that wasn't really worth running it because you know there are better cards that gave more power or just gave it to themselves or like well i guess she was more useful than in those cases when they just gave it to themselves unless they gave a lot more power but in this deck amazing here's why 
5k again there's trish so she's the better rear guard and supporting rear guards unless you know you want to give it to your other rear guards to make sure that they're harder to hit in the front row which is why you want to run her so things in the front row during your punch turn are hard to hit because you're in final rush but also put her behind the vanguard free 18k base unless they kill her Making so that your grade twos that restand for double criticals like Eden are no longer the instant threat unless they're already at three or four damage. By the way, two damage in this deck is kill range. No joke, if you get to two damage, this deck can kill you from two damage. So um, never go to two damage against us, or at least never against me, because that's what I've seen to be consistently killing decks at. But um, Stephanie now is a possible target instead of Eden or Leonard or stuff like that, because she can add more defensive power, meaning it's harder to kill those units. All around, Stephanie's an amazing grade one, and I love her for that reason alone. For of, because she does it for free, and that's where this deck has, like, no CB problem. Also, I remember I see people say, Bruce has a CB problem with this new one. Um, only if you let it get a CB problem. Then we have the last grade one in the deck, which is the grade one of the ride deck, Diabolo's Bad Steve, who I've had to call upon a little bit more often than I thought I would have to in this new deck, but hey, still a good card, because I can call from rear guard via Julian skill and other skills. So grade one boost, 5k shield, 8k base, auto is placed on vanguard, choose a card from your soul, call to your back row center, and soul charge one. So grade it can get you a free soul charge, which is amazing, and then a free booster, so 14k for first grade, uh, for your first attack, which is nice. And then choose from rear guard circle, if you're in final rush, guess what's 5k? Great, so not a bad skill, because final burst acts just like final rush, so, you know, you can be a 13k booster or a 13k swinger uh, during both players' turns. was all around really nice to have. And, again, getting that 14k on Vanguard for the first swing is nice. Because, believe it or not, I, a lot of people would think, especially against this deck. Again, I say, kill range for me is at 2 damage. Um, just simply put, guarding early is probably going to be your best advantage. But if your opponent's already swinging for 14, a 15k on a grade 1 is a 1 to pass. And half the time, I do genuinely pull triggers from the top cards of my deck. Do you really want to waste a 15k shield there? Or do you want to drop more down and make sure that you're safe? Either way, you're dropping hand cards. And it's nice to have. I love Steve a lot. His skill helps me play so many mind games with people that have seen me play Vitamins Bruce. One of them in the right deck. A good grade 1. He's solid and he's nice to have. Then we move on to our grade twos. First up, we have four copies of Diablos Madonna Megan. Again, another card that I said I wouldn't run. I like how I said, like, in any of my Final Rush decks, there are cards I wouldn't run. Most of my stuff from my Final Rush decks that I said I would not run, I immediately brought over here because they are actually good. Because the other ones, like, had, like, setup or battle skills that I liked a lot. And this one is just all battle skills because here's the thing. Final Rush in this deck, you can't enter during the main phase. So there's no point in battle skills. You go all in on the battle skills. So great tune to 5k shield, 10k base on Megan. I'll do rear guard when she attacks. If you're on Final Rush, you can get plus 10k for the turn. Great. So... All around, it's an amazing skill being able just to swing for 20, and it works the second you get to grade 3, because again, Final Rush activates the second you get to your battle phase with Vitamix Bruce, as long as you have all Diabolos on your board. So, 20k swing on a gra uh, grade 2 opponent's nice, or like a possible 30k swing without boosters or triggers is all around a nice skill to have, or actually should be 35, because, you know, she'd be recent from Vitamix. So, great skill. All around, I like her a lot, gets power for free, uh, adds pressure, what's not talking about her, 4 up. it's a nice card. Then we have four copies of Diabolos Boys Eden. You would be stupid not to run this in your deck. That's like the one time I'm ever gonna call people out on this. So great tune to 5k shield, 10k base. Continues to be regard if you're on final rush, again during both players' turns, gets plus 5k power, then if it's stood by a card effect this turn, it gets an extra crit too, which is great. So kinda sucks for you though, if say for example, you play this in premium and you go against Dominate. And Dominate proceeds to steal this because how Dominate works is it stands the unit. Meaning, I mean, granted, you would have to somehow enter Final Rush too. But uh, if you did manage to enter Final Rush, then yes, 15k base, double critical to face. Mm, not really nice to have. But A, being able to be a 15k, regardless if you're in Final Rush or in Final Burst, the second you hit grade 3, and possibly be a crit once you start restanding. Who, dude, this is why I, this deck has pressure. It's dangerous. And also, if you want to let the first attack hit, because maybe it's the easiest, remember, auto rear. Once you attack hits, Karen Boss 1, choose an opponent's rear guard and kill it. Meaning, if you let the first one hit, you lose a rear guard. And honest to God, do you really want to lose a rear guard in this situation? Because you know another one's coming with double critical and extra power on it. So, uh, yeah, be smart about this one. All around, Eden is a terrifying threat. On hit pressure with killing rear guards, extra crits with restanding, extra power, and is literally the reason why this deck's kill range is too damage. That in my mind being the crit I sack every so often. So, four of Eden, a good grade two. I love it a lot. It, it's just a solid menace on the board. And if you see this thing come down, target it. Target it like hell. The only other thing you should target in that case is Stephanie. But target one of those two like hell, murder with fire. Eugene has the best matchup against this because it can just kill them in five seconds. But um, even then, Eugene can still lose to this because I beat Eugene with this deck very easily. Or not easily, but not hard either. Then we have our last grade two in the deck. And I'll explain why it's the last grade two when we get to the end of the deck in total. 
And that is Diablo's Neko Jamil. So a great two interceptor, 5k shield, 10k base. Continues to be a guard to guard. So if you are in final burst, so essentially you're on Vine Man's Bruce or your opponent's at grade 3 or greater, he gets plus 10k pound, 5k shield, which is great. So he's a 10k interceptor and a 20k base. Combine those Stephanie, 25k base on a grade fucking 2. Let's fucking go, my boys. Try touching this bitch now. And then auto when he's placed on rear guard circle. If your vanguard is specifically Diabolos, Viamance, or Bruce, so you can't use the other Bruces, but fair. Karen Boss 1, Soul Charge 1, choose up to 1, Great 3, less normal uniform with Diablo Sense Carnage from your soul, culture no from rear guard circle. Here's what I love about this. This is literally a better version. Who was it that I said this was? Was it. It's like a. It's a main phase version of Julian, but. Oh, wait, no, it was Lyle. It was Lyle from set 4 for Bruce. Whereas, like, Karen Boss 1, Soul Charge 2, Call Car from Soul, get plus 5. In my opinion, it's a better version of Lao, because while it does get one less Soul Charge, he gets more power, he gets more shield, and he literally, well, granted, they both get you any unit. I guess Lyle's technically better in that case, because he can get you any unit. This one has to be specifically a grade 3 or less normie, that's Diabolos. But again, I say, any grade 3 or less normie unit that is a Diabolos, that is literally everything in this deck that isn't a PG or the over. That is the most freest Soul Search skill I have ever seen. It is a solid 4 of. I love this card. Main phase support all the way. Let's fucking go. Four of. No arguments. Screw everything else in terms of logic. Because it gets you um, everything you need in one go. Then we have our last grade 2 in the deck. And that's one copy of Diabolo's Anger Richard. I know I said this was the last grade 2. But I guess the last grade 2 in the main deck. This is the last grade 2 in the right deck. Uh, auto was placed on Vanguard Circle. Put up Vanguard Soul Draw Card. So you know you usually send Matt to Soul to get your hand cards back. So great. And then continues to be guard if you're in Final Rush. He gets plus 5. Okay. Not as good as Steve. Because if anything this deck wants more boosters on board. Because you know you have these such powerful grade 2s. That yeah like you know if you don't have Megan or Eden. Then yes this comes like the next best thing. I mean outside of Jamma obviously but um you would prefer steve for rear guard boosting because the deck can hit numbers from anywhere on board like anything can turn into attacker you would rather have a booster but eh, we're just still good so if you have to come from so from sold for jamal skill you can but again if it's between this and steve or even matt for that matter arguably go for steve or matt obviously steve first maybe matt if you really need a booster but otherwise we're just kind of like blast but hey, he's still useful though because again free soul draw and he's the idea below so great one of them in the right deck and then we have our grade threes. We have three copies of Diabolo's Diver Julian. I like how I run this one as a the same number as I run with Julian in my other uh, Bruce deck. You know, the one that has Unrivaled and regular Bruce in it. And yet somehow this is the deck I see it more consistently in, which doesn't make sense. But anyways, grade three turn persona, 13k base. Auto rear guard once per turn. When this unit attacks a Vanguard by Karen Boston one, this unit gets plus 2k for the turn for each card in your damage zone. And if you have Vanguard boosted this card, you may soul charge one for every two cards in your damage zone. And you shift the same number of cards, soul charge by this effect from your soul called in your open rear guard circles. AK, if you have four damage he gets plus eight and you get to soul charge two and call two great um you don't have to call two because again it's up two so you can call you can choose to call zero if you really wanted to if you had a full board or you could just not call them because again they have to be the open regard circles but the fact that he can get board set up all around is really nice and the fact that he can get a free plus 10 if you're at 10 or if you're at five damage is also really nice as well it adds pressure and again which is another good thing, which is what made original Bruce so good, in my opinion, is the fact that they finally got a card that allowed them to get going while they were at grade 3 without having Final Rush or Final Burst. And now that you have access to Final Rush and Final Burst on grade 3, this just makes it even better because now you can access stuff like Eden from your soul or like worst case scenario, if you've bricked this game and all you've seen is Julian and four normal units, you can fetch out Richard and Matt from your soul to get numbers. Or, or uh, not, not Matt, uh, Steve from your soul to get numbers. All around, Julian's great. He's the only time though that you will consist of counter boss from. Here's how most of your counter boss goes. Most of it goes to Viamance. On rare occasions, it goes to Eden and Julian and every now and again, it goes to Jamil. AK, like if you're consistent, if you're using Using every skill that has access to counter blast when you can then yeah technically you'll have a counter blast problem but if you just you know use it like a normal person and not go 24 7 uh fully loaded on those counter blast spamming skills then you're pretty much good to not have a cv problem all around um julian's great though gets rear guards gets power gets soul even though it's not really important in this deck let's not talk about him three of and i consistently draw into him and then the last card in the deck is the one we were definitely all waiting for when we first saw set 9. I mean, I know personally, granted I didn't want to see Viamance Bruce, but I, there was a very specific Tree Hydra that I'm reviewing next week because, oh, this is the only reason I've stayed for Overdress for so long in terms of anime-wise. That is not a lie. That is the only reason I stayed for Overdress So, um, because I knew something like this was going to happen. So, hey, I'll, I'm going to enjoy the Hydra next week. But for now, let's focus on the Brucey boy. So Diabolos, oh, I didn't change the name. Let me quickly do that right now in front of, oh, I didn't change the skill either. I thought I did. Well, let's just do this right now. Diabolos, Viamance, Brusu. So, 
Ignore this skill. I will read you word for word what it says in Japanese. I, well, obviously not in Japanese. But essentially, here's what its skill is. Auto Vanguard, when this unit attacks... Or sorry, not Auto Vanguard. Oh, yeah. Auto Vanguard, at the start of your attack phase, if all of your rear guards have Diabolos in their card name, enter Final Rush. Then, if your opponent's Vanguard's a great through your greater, you enter Final Burst. Final Burst is the same as Final Rush, is what it says as the, on, like, the text. Or either says that, or it says, um... They are like they both happen at the same time, so you still enter final rush at the same time. So all around, great, it triggers it the second you get to your battle phase, regardless of what grade your opponent's vanguard is at for final rush, meaning all of these fuckers go off except for Jamil. And then if you if your opponent's vanguards are grade three, you enter final burst. And his skill specifically retains to final burst for auto vanguard. When he attacks, if you are in final burst, by counterblasting one, choose a column with deal choose Choose your units with Diabolos in the card in their card name. Sorry, choose a column. Stand all units with Diabolos in their card name in that column, and they both get plus five. So it stands less than, or technically stands equal to what the other Bruces do, but it gets you less multi attack. Difference is, it gives you more numbers because before you couldn't really boost. Now you can't unless you like did the convoluted combo of Leonard and something else. But now you can boost, restand them, get bigger numbers, combine with Eden for more pressure. And you do this all for cheaper, possibly on your first grade 3 turn, if you win second. This deck is stupid. No joke. It is genuinely stupid. It is so powerful, it is so good, being able to rush your opponent from grade 2 comfortably, and then proceeding to go to grade 3, whether you're on final burst or final rush, be able to proc off so many skills for numbers and make them drop hand cards galore for it, is amazing. And being able to restand rear guards uh, if you went second, already on first grade 3 turn, so turn early, it's so fun. This deck does so many stupid shenanigans, and the numbers it hits are insane. I once had a game where I made Eden hit, like, high 60s. By the way, this was before Jamil or um, Trish got released, So or, like, any other support we have for Final Burst. So it was just Final Rush with, um, you know, Viamance in it, and Eden had hit 60 somehow without triggers, So or, like, 60-something somehow without triggers, which is honestly great. Persona I was involved. I just don't remember what else was involved. Aron, Viamance, good card. Gets restands, gets every skill triggered so early on, and I still question why people said Viamance was bad. Again, when they said it was bad, it had literally no support, and even then, its support was Final Rush support, and arguably, except for a handful of cards like their orders, because again, it has to this starting starts at the attack phase, not the main phase, uh, so you can't use your orders fully, or you can't use stuff like. Um, Derek, who had to be in Final Rush for you to get a board. I mean, you can still use it to kill a rear guard. You just can't use it to get a board. It was still fucking good. I don't understand why the hell people were hating on it. Everyone's fucking insane. Clearly, they have some BS uh, opinion of how cards should fucking be. But whatever. Four of Bruce. Amazing. He's just great. And that's it for the deck. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, the w reason why I said... The card I was talking about earlier of why that's the end of the grade 2s was Leonard. I know a lot of people are running Leonard. And a lot of people are calling me crazy for not running Leonard. As we all know... I hate running cards that you can't use the full ability of. It bothers me so much. And Leonard, I understand. Column Killer, he's fucking amazing. But the fact that you can't, like, I, and I can use the Soul Charge skill, granted, but the fact that I can't call something from Soul, like, at least in the other Bruce deck, I had chances to stay on regular Bruce, so I could call stuff from Soul with his skill. This deck, you don't have regular Bruce, because you can't use regular or unrival with it, because they enter Final Rush during the main phase, and, or, sorry, during the ride phase, and Bruce makes you lose the Final Rush slash Final Burst hit at the end of your opponent's turn. So, it does suck, it's annoying with uh, how that works, so you can't really use the other two, but I, it's just how it is. And that's why I don't run Leonard. Again, I just don't like uh, using cards if I can't use their full abilities. Um, again, don't listen to me. Run it. It's a fucking good card. It literally kills columns. Get rid of Megan for it because it's fucking amazing, but um, that's just how I work. So without further ado, I'm going to end it here. I hope you guys enjoyed. All around this deck's very fun to play. It can do some stupid shenanigans, and I cannot wait to see where Bushy takes us further. My only hope is we get a new ride line for them just to have some new faces, but even if we don't, the deck honestly works just as well as it does uh, as normally, so... Uh, great deck. I hope you guys enjoyed. Don't forget to like, subscribe, join the Discord, follow Twitch, and I'll see you all in the next one. Don't forget up your vanguards.